Okay, all set. Ready? Close the door and then we'll be good. That was beautiful. I had a little camera while you were thinking. What? <laughs> you had me on camera while I was thinking. Yeah, it was very, it was extremely <coughs> interesting. What do you think? Dominic thinks. <laughs> okay. All set? Sound is still ready? Camera's rolling? Okay, Dom. Um... I love this play because I think that it is a fantastic example of Simon's writing and of the uh, preoccupations that you find in a lot of his work. Um, I first worked with Simon at the Travers a few years ago. We produced a play of his called Pornography. Um, and what was extraordinary about that play was how he delves into the kind of psyche of everyday people. And he addresses issues that I think um, are things that we all think about, um, but he's completely um, bare and honest in the way that he talks about it. Things like racism, things like pornography, um, the ability of human beings to think things that you know we dare not or should not think whether it's um, uh, our attitudes to watching planes crash into buildings or whether it's, you know, the idea of somebody holding on to a baby and thinking, what would happen if I let go? Um, and I think it's that part of his, you know, what he describes so well in his plays that I find really refreshing, really honest and really truthful. And I think with uh, T5, again, he, uh, he, he's uh, exploring similar themes the idea of, an, of a, an everyday housewife, basically, who's come to a kind of crisis in her life, who has witnessed uh, a boy being stabbed outside her house, but has reacted to it in, in a way that surprises herself, basically by doing nothing. Um, uh, so it's a woman who's kind of thinking about where she is in her life, her relationship with her husband, the fact that her child is growing up, and for once she decides to do something about it, uh, as she says she decides to turn left instead of turning right uh, and goes on a journey that, that kind of eventually um, kind of explodes into this extraordinary kind of um, almost fantastic event that happens at the end of the play. Um, and I guess it's that quality to Simon's writing that I love, that, that he sets up kind of very naturalistic, very accessible worlds, um, but he really, really manages to kind of get under the skin of, of those kind of everyday people. I think he's a real poet of the theatre, um, and I mean that in a way, in, 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 and I think it's kind of a surprising thing to say about him because I think he's thought of about as being, a, you know, a, quite a naturalistic writer. When we think about kind of poets of the theatre, we think about people like Howard Barker, for example. But Simon writes um, really beautifully, beautiful rhythms, um, beautiful images, um, and it, and. You know, and I think it's not until you're almost working on it that you realise that that's, that that's how it's structured and how that's how it's written. And I think it's kind of through those rhythms and through those images that in this play particularly, um, the character in the play, who we, has no name, kind of explores and, and realises the world around her. Um, and I think that's very particular about his writing. Well, actually, Simon wanted Meg to play the part. Um, when I said to him, I want to do this play, he said, see if you can get Meg Fraser to play that part. Um, Meg had been in a play uh, by Zinni Harris at the festival a couple of years ago when Simon's show was also won as part of our programme and, and he'd seen her work there and, and I think really liked her work. She's a tremendous actress and, and so he immediately thought of her when um, we talked about who would play the part. I first worked with Meg when I was um, at Dundee Rep. Um, Dundee Rep has a permanent uh, acting company, which Meg was one of the founder members of. Um, and we first worked in a production of Winter's Tale, Shakespeare's Winter's Tale, where she played Hermione, um, with immense kind of emotional uh, uh, courage and truthfulness. Um, 
and uh, we've, you know, we've worked a lot since then together. The process really is one of, of reading and rereading the play over and over again so that I understand it. So uh, I understand its structure, understand its rhythms, um, understand you know, what it means and what the playwright's trying to say through it. Um, and you know, basically on the whole that's what preparation is. Um, and you know, when you come into the rehearsal room, part of the rehearsal is, is sharing in a way that preparation, but also being open um, and excited to what you discover in, in, the, in the rehearsal room. Of course, you always hear the play in your head in a particular way because you know, it's you doing it, but as soon as somebody else speaks those words, the play becomes a, a different play. Um, and you know, part of the kind of thrill of rehearsal is, a, is, is that discovery, I think. We do a lot of stage readings, we do a lot of readings because we're a new writing theatre uh, and part of our process of developing plays is um, after a certain amount of development getting them up on their feet with actors reading them. Um, every festival we tend to have a season of breakfast plays like, as we're doing this year um, and the audience are really responsive to it. I think because um, there's something very spontaneous about the way an actor performs with not a huge amount of rehearsal time, so it really is a, an instinctive response to the text, and often that is um, one of the most truthful responses you can get as an actor. I mean, often you find in rehearsal that you can be, you know, the read through can be the best ever kind of hearing of that play, and and re rehearsals kind of go round the houses in order to come back to, to something very similar. Um, because there's, there's an instinctive response to text that, as I say, that is often the most truthful. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, rehearsed readings benefit from that way of working, mm -hmm. from, from an act just uh, preparing to kind of dive in and, and to instinct, instinctively respond to the words on the page. Um, today, when we've been working on the play, we've, we've worked on it as if we were rehearsing for a full-blown production. Um, and I think, I think actually in this case, the, the difference between, you know, what we have at the end of today and what we would have perhaps after a week rehearsal, I hope is not too far, too far different. Um, apart from the fact that, you know, the actress wouldn't be holding the, the, the script in her hand. But normally we, we find that um, in, in these situations, audiences, sort of become sort of immune to the fact that actors have got scripts in their hands mm. um, and just are enjoying the words uh, and the actor's performance. Mm. Um, that certainly seems to be our experience. Yes. Um... No. no. I mean, I have spoken to Simon about the play and we've talked about, you know, where it came from in terms of... Uh, why he wrote it and, and, and the particular structure of it and what he was trying to explore. Um, we didn't necessarily talk about the audience so much, but, but just a, about possible choices um, with, you know, with the text. And, and, and I guess that's the, the biggest difference when you have a longer rehearsal period is you have the opportunity to explore different choices. Mm -hmm. Again, sometimes you end up you know, with the one you instinctively made at the beginning, but, but you know, that's a deeper decision by having explored and discarded other things. Good. I think he was uh, exploring, I think, interested in the idea of um, how we, um, as human beings, respond to the modern world um, and how physically the body almost becomes alienated um, in terms of, of uh, a need to kind of get back to something basic and prim primitive um, and, and how, I suppose, kind of consumerism, capitalism, those kinds of things, which are, I guess, represented in this play by Terminal 5, which is, after all, a kind of... Um, uh, a sort of temple to consumerism. Um, how, in a way, those kind of structures, capitalism, 
kind of divorce us from our real selves, from uh, from our ability to kind of react to the world in a kind of honest, straightforward way. And I think that's what was kind of preoccupying him. I, I, I directed a play of his earlier this year called Heaven, uh, which was also set in, a, in an airport. Um, and again, there was a kind of there were sort of similar themes about uh, in that play about a character who was nature, the sea, fields uh, terrified him um, because you know he preferred to have his iPod on all day or or watch videos or whatever because by doing that we you know we we don't have to kind of engage with you know who we really are or what we really are as human beings. Um, so I think this play definitely belongs to that kind of period of thinking um, that that he was doing. Also, I think interestingly, um, talking to him, he talked about how the play was quite um, uh, just kind of came out of him, as it were, and not sort of planned moment by moment, um, and that there is a there is a kind of free flowingness to it, which which I really like, and I think you get in a sense of the rhythms and uh, and the pace of the piece. Um, and uh, and also that you know the, the play has snippets of songs that come in through it, and I think those were sort of again just came into his head as he was writing it. So uh, I think for him, interestingly, the, the the actual way of creating the piece was, was was different and unusual for him. But I think you can sort of sense similar. Mm. Um, kind of themes and preoccupations and a kind of uneasiness about um, just about, about about you know being who we are and how we kind of fit into society and into what people um, seem to be you know, people sort of ex tell us what our morality should be and, and that's in a way a very false construct in some ways. These plays are interesting because they were all, you know, they were commissioned. So they were people that we asked um, and they said yes and wrote them. And I, but what I really like about this collection of plays is that I think that there's a nice sense of people writing just what they want to write. And I think um, I try, you know, I never prescribe to a playwright what you know, if they're commissioned, the, the play I want them to write. Um, but I think, I feel with, with these plays, there's, a, there's a, a sense of kind of playfulness, a sense of um, writers engaging with the fact that they're only 30 minutes long, that they're small plays, and actually that they could mm -hmm. do anything they want. They weren't going to, they weren't, you know, going to have to be sort of, uh, have major productions. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's a kind of playfulness and a, and a, a sense of experimentation and a sense of bravery, I think, from all the writers, which is, um, I think, one of the great things about this project. Since we started talking about Highbrow, for me, it's been about um, a number of things, uh, opportunities to give a wider audience um, an awareness of what we do, of the work of, of playwrights, and I think, I think, I think mo you know, there's, a, there's probably a limited number of playwrights who are genuinely and generally well known. Um, so to give those, you know, those names a, a wider uh, audience has been very important for me and for the Traverse. Um, also, I like the idea of, of um, somehow capturing the process, capturing the rawness, the roughness. You know, we talked before about, we do a lot of readings, a lot of those kind of semi-stage productions that's, that are part of the way that we work as a theatre and are part of the process to getting full stage plays uh, in the end. So I think, and I hope that, that, that sort of demystifying that and, and giving a little insight into that way uh, of working, but always concentrating on the actor and the text. Um, no, you know, there's no lighting, there's no, no fancy lighting, there's no big sets. It's just about the words and the actor saying the words. And, and I think that's a, 
a, a kind of fantastic opportunity. I'm always reminded of, um, even today, uh, when I was younger, if you remember, John Barton did that uh, series playing Shakespeare for, for Channel 4, Channel 4's early days, you know, and as, and as a kind of stage struck teenager that they were fantastic because they were just about actors and text and and a sense of kind of being there in the rehearsal room um which i found really exciting and i'm you know and, and i think that's part of what we're trying to create with with what we're doing with highbrow this week very much so yeah great darling fantastic thanks very much you're total natural <laughs> brilliant thanks